Hello once again, this is Pastor John Carlos, Senior Pastor of the Christian Pentecostal Church in Staten Island, New York. We've been studying for the next few weeks of the power and majesty of soul with, with the devil. And we're seeing that he actually has no power. The only power he, get, he gets is what we give him. For example, we know from the word of God that the devil is going to be punished forever. In the bottomless pit, in hell, and even in the last time in, in, in the book of Revelation, you can read in, in chapter 20, how he'll be punished for the last time and never be able to come out again against the people of God. Also remember this, the devil is not omnipresent. He, he's not everywhere at the same time like Jesus is and the Holy Spirit and God himself. And he's of course not omnipotent, meaning that he has more power than God. That's not true. He has a very limited power. In fact, most of his schemes are just what they are, schemes. He, he uses all kinds of schemes to get people to do his bidding. And of course, he's not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. It's interesting, one thing about the devil is when it comes to what's gonna to happen to him, all he has to do is pick up a Bible and read the book of Revelation. So again, we see that God is gonna cause a tremendous change in everything. We're not gonna be here on earth the way we are now and so on. And of course, Satan and all those people who have unfortunately not given their hearts to the, to the Lord were gonna join the devil as well. Now, we have to realize as Christians that we have victory over the devil. We can say to him, get thee behind me, Satan, just like these, Jesus said, in the name of Jesus. He tells us to use his word, his power, right? But again, we see that one of the things that Christians don't realize that we found that about 28 times in the Greek New Testament, we see a word that is used and it, may, it really means an overcomer. We can be overcome as if we follow God's recipe for that particular situation. Look what it says here in the word of God in John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you that, you, that ye may, might have peace in the world. You shall have tribulation, but not be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And that includes the devil as well. And we also see in Revelation 2, 21 and 17, it says this. Ye are of God, little children. You have overcome them, because greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. That includes people, demons, and devil himself. He or, the, he or she that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Hallelujah. That means that she shall be my son too, and daughter. We also see that there's some interesting things about ourselves. One of the reasons why the devil can get to us it's because we don't know who we are. We have to know our own weaknesses. We know there's certain things that are easily trappable for us or get in trouble, and we have to play, pray about that and, and not put ourselves in the situation. Sometimes we walk into an ambush knowing that we're going to walk in. He also, we also have to know our strength. The Bible gives us so much strength. In the name of Jesus, we can cast out devils and so on. Again, these are things that we can use when, when he comes to tempt us or try to somehow shake us up. We also have to know his weaknesses, and we see, we've see we been talking about what they are. He's not who he thinks he is. He's not God, and again, one of the main things about the devil and his demons is that they can't be everywhere at the same time, where God and the Holy Spirit and Christ can be anywhere in the, at the same time. Hallelujah. And also, we need to know his strength. What is his strength? Because most of his strength is actually a scam and unfortunately people give him op open doors and he, he comes in and messes it up their life and everything around them it's also good to know that our strength as well and our weaknesses as a christian we know sooner or later what is our weakness that the devil would come to he's not going to come to a strength because it's too much work for him but we have weaknesses all kinds of things Look at Romans 7 and 18 tells us, for I know that in me, this is Paul talking, in my flesh, he says, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is in good, I find not. Here Paul was tell, telling us 
that you need to know who you are and what you can do and can't do. And what you can't do, you can ask the Spirit of God to give you the strength, right? We need to know our strength. We also see Paul speaking in Galatians 2.20. And look what he says. I am crucified with Christ. Now, we know that that didn't happen in the sense of the cross. But he's talking about something that he has made himself to be. That whatever comes his way, he is crucified to those things that are hurting, hurting him and trying to destroy him. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it says, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And, and that which I know I, I, and have in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. Now listen, this is one I love. Philippians 4.13. You ready for it? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. And again, we see that Satan doesn't have all these we, he doesn't have all these strengths. He has a lot of weaknesses. First of all, let's take a look at some of them. He can't tempt the believer except by God's permission. Wow. In other words, the devil's not going to let him tempt us because we can't overcome it. He's only allowing something to come that we can overcome. So when you say, oh, I couldn't help myself, you're really lying. In Christ, we can say no and that's the end of it. And again, we can you can look at the story of Job and you will see some of the things that happened with him. God knows the capacity that you and I can bear as a Christian. And he's not going to let anything come in that will overpower us. The only way something can overpower us is if we let it in. And we let him in, so to speak. And again, God will not allow Satan to go beyond our breaking point. He'll, keep, he'll hold us up. He'll give us a way out. When people say, I couldn't stop, I couldn't stop, it's because they wanted to. They wanted to keep going and getting in trouble. So be very, very careful when you use these things to try as an excuse to God because he's going to tell you, you didn't come to me because you would have never been able to get into that situation to begin with, Right? God allows, it, he allows, allows temptation, but again, it's temptation that we can handle in Christ. We, he can't overcome us. Amen? Look at James, the first chapter, in the first four verses. James, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, listen to this. Count it all joy when ye fall into divers or, del, or obvious or numerous temptations. Wow, all oh, joy. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith or the testing of your faith work in patience. But let patience have a perfect will that you may be able to be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Again, in James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man or woman that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And then again, we see it again in 1 Peter 1 and 6. Wherein we greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if we need ye, ye are all witnesses throughout the manifold temptations, that the, cr the cryal of your faith being such more, more than precious than the, of that of gold that perisheth, although he be tried in the fire or she, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. I hate to say this, but we have no excuses if we mess up. God is willing and able to help us. He's willing and able to make a door for, that we can open or close. And again, we have the strength. We have the power. We, have, we can say, get thee behind me, Satan. Just like Jesus said, and he's got to leave in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, the, straighten, the strength of Satan, Satan is this. He wants us to be disappointed in life. Disappointed and looking for ways to be appointed, so to speak. And he has a whole list of things that can mess you up when you're looking for this. When we need to look for it in Christ. Even discouragement. Things are going to go wrong in our life. And things may not be what we wanted them to be. But we can go to the Lord and ask for his, his help. He can give us strength to get through it. Remember, he can't 
do anything more powerful than we can, we can handle. And, it, and the devil knows that himself. We need to tell him that once in a while. Even despair. Sometimes we, wait, we want something, we want something, and it's not happening. And we have to realize that when we ask God to do something in our life, and he does it for a reason maybe we don't understand, but his reason will always be the right reason and the right decision. Again, as we go through the word of God, we're going to see so many different things that tell us about Satan's power, but thank God it also tells us about God's power. For we can, in him, we are strong. We are supermen and superwomen because the spirit of God that lives within us is powerful and able to do all the things that we need to protect us. Next week, we're going to be starting another subject. We've been talking about the Satan and his, and his demons. We're going to be talking about angels. Who are they? Why were they, why were they formed and so on? And what, what do they have in, in regard to the, the children of God and also the kingdom of God? So we'll see you next week when we talk about God's angels. Thank you.